announcements. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I know we have a lot, a lot of things going on, and I love what, um, how Evelyn was just so enthusiastic yeah, with all of the announcements. Where's she at? Thank you so much for the energy. Uh, you know, when we talk about Jesus, uh, it shouldn't be like, well, do you know who Jesus is? It should, do you know who given me life and salvation? You know what I'm saying? And um, I just, I didn't, I didn't tell my wife to do this announcement because I wanted to do it myself. So, um, but we have a whole bunch of these flags that you put, that you put on your vehicle even today. This one says, praying for community and nation. Praying for community. This one says, praying for community and nation. And this one, the big reveal, praying for USA, right? And so uh, it's important, just like we talked about earlier, wherever your footsteps begin to take that territory for Jesus. And so what do we do with this? We put it on our car. Remember last week we were talking about sport worshipers. And thanks, Nick, he actually found someone as he was driving on the road uh, uh, some, you know, sports team worshiper, they, they had the flags on there, they had the stickers on there, football team, you know, so awesome. And, uh, but can we put these on our car, not just to say, hey, you know, we're believers, but as wherever we're driving, pray, pray. As you're driving and you see a business that seemed close, say, Lord, can you bless this businessman? May he reopen. As you're driving and you see a home, it'll say, Lord, can you bless this family so that they would have enough? Amen, somebody. As you're driving and you see a policeman, Lord, will you bless this policeman? Are you guys with me here this morning? As you're driving and you see a community, say, Lord, bless this community. Lord, bless these people. Lord, bless this Snellville, Buford, wherever you are at. So I encourage every single person. We, we have a lot of these. I encourage you to take one, take two, take three. Put it on your car as you're driving. And your route to school, your route to work, just pray for the things that you see all around you. Now I have very little time. Can someone say praise you Jesus. Thank you Lord for what you have done. Come on give God a shout of praise and glory this morning. I'm going to be very uh, very short. I don't think I'm going to say a message. I'm just going to make a few points and we're going to pray. What has really spoken to me is Joshua and and the bishop had spoken a little bit about him today in Joshua chapter 1 he talked about me the, the this book made the law not depart from your lips and I, I wanted to touch base on what was happening with the Israelites as they exited out Egypt and God says I have a promise for you I have a land for you that is flowing with milk and honey. That is a powerful testimony. That is a powerful promise that God has given his people. Now God has spoken to me and he says, Emmanuel, do you know the promises that I have given you? I give, have given you those promises, not that you would just write them down in your journal and say what great promises the Lord has given. But I have given you these promises so that you would enter into those promises. And I said, Lord, well, how do I enter into your promises? Because you said, Father, that I'm going to be blessed, that my family is going to be blessed. Lord, you said that this building is going to be a place of healing and restoration, a place of worship, a pray place of praise. Come on. You said that this place is going to be a place of healing and restoration, a place of the prophetic. That is what you said, God. That is your words. That is your promise. So how do I get into your promise? And you know, the Israelites, they, they walk through the wilderness. Have you ever been with your kids on a merry-go-around? Merry-go-around. Um, it, it's one of those things where you enter in and it just spins around. 
And you usually sit, you sit on some horses or they have different kind of animals. There, there's, there's, you know, elephants, whatever, you know, different characters. And it seemed to me like the Israelites, as they exited out of Egypt, going into their promise. Are you hearing me this morning? It seemed to me like they got on a merry go around. And so they got into it and all they did was go around and around and around. Church, are you listening here this morning? You know, sometimes in our life we have a promise. But for whatever reason, we get on the merry-go-round. And all we do, we just change the animals. We'll change the animal. Today we're riding on the horse. Tomorrow we're riding on the elephant. But nothing absolutely changes. We might change the relationship. We might change the job. We might change something else. But we're still in the merry-go-round. We're never getting to the promise because we're stuck on the same thing over and over again. Can I tell you, when you begin to look at Jesus, you'll get out of the merry-go-round and you'll get into your promise. Hallelujah. Can you give God a shout of praise and glory? I'm looking and I'm, I'm praying with families. And the husband says, Pastor, can you please pray for our marriage? Because our marriage is experiencing the same thing that my father and mother went through. It seems like my grandmother went through it. It seems like my dad and mom went through it. And I'm still going through the same thing. Pastor, can you pray for me? Pastor, can you pray for me? My dad suffered with alcoholism. I'm suffering with alcoholism. And I'm worried that my children are... Pastor, can you pray for me? Can I tell you, all we need to do is begin to trust in the Lord. And he will get us out of the merry-go-round into the promises of God that he has for you and I. Hallelujah. There is no other way. You see, with the promise came the word. With the promise came the provision, what you and I need to do. And most of the time, God doesn't draw a detailed map. He says, trust in me, and that's going to be enough for you. So many times I wake up in the morning, and me and the bishop were just talking this morning. I said, hey, bishop, how did you sleep this morning? He said, you know it. Because I know I know that sometimes we can't sleep because there's so much stuff happening. Do I have any witnesses in the house? Sometimes we can't sleep because our kids seem to, seem to be kind of having trouble because there, there's trouble with the, the career. There's issues with the marriage. It's so difficult. And it seems like we're just going around and around and around. Well, it is time that we focus on Jesus and we not focus on the things that people say or the things that the enemy does in our life. It's time that the church of Jesus Christ says, I will follow you. I will follow your word because you are the yes and amen. Hallelujah. It is time, church. It is time. You see, the Israelites under Moses, they had a hard time getting out of the merry-go-around because they were afraid of the people who lived in their promise. They were of, afraid of the people that were standing between them and the promise. The Bible says that Moses sent out spies and those spies, majority of them came back and they said, we cannot overtake them. We cannot get into the promise because there's people there who are giants and we're just grasshoppers. Can I tell you, we don't need to worry about what people say. Can I tell you, we don't need to worry about what the word of the enemy says. Because we have a greater word in Jesus Christ. Because we have greater promises in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so there's going to be people that stand in the way. That stand in the way of you achieving, you getting into your promise. But you say, Father, your word has spoken. You have promised. You have said it. And God, you are the referee, not somebody else. 
In a game of football, there comes a older, usually an older man. He's usually out of shape. Did anybody notice that? You have this big guys running around 400, 500 pounds in American football. In, in uh, European football, I think they're like 70 pounds. But, but you have these athletic guys. And then you have the older gentleman referee. He's not buffed up, but he raises up a flag and he blows a whistle and the game has to stop. Can I tell you our God is unlike the referee because he's powerful and he's strong. But he's like the referee because when he raises up his hand, everything has to stop. Whatever's going on in your life, whoever is standing against you between you and the promise, when you look at Jesus, when you trust in Jesus, everything will have to stop when you bring God into the picture. When you draw heaven unto earth, wherever you are, heaven will begin to change things around in your situation. You're coming out of that merry-go-round into that promised land. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you, Father. I'm talking to you, Grandma, to you, Mother. God has a plan for you. All you need to do is just trust in Him. Hallelujah. Can you give God a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Joshua 1 3 the Lord says to Joshua I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses we need to walk by faith into what God has prepared us you know it's one thing you know sometimes we feel like we are full of faith but we have no faith sometimes we feel like we have a lot of faith but we don't have any faith. You see, the Bible calls us believers, not feelers. The Bible calls us believers, not feelers. Sometimes you feel like, like nothing's happening. But keep on believing. Sometimes you're looking at the situation and nothing seems to be shifting. But keep on believing. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, keep on believing today? You see, your feelings are not what moves the spiritual realm. It's your faith that moves the spiritual realm. Amen. And so, and so God, God speaks to Joshua. He says, Joshua, be strong and courageous. He says, wherever your footsteps, whatever land that, that your footsteps, it's going to be yours. It's going to be yours. And, and I'm looking at the nation. I'm looking at what's happening. Yes, it's scary. I'm telling my wife, wife, I don't know what's about to happen. But I believe, Father. I believe that there is a promise for me. I believe there is a promise for my family. I believe that there is a blessing here for me. Come on. Somebody has got to believe that God has promised you. And whatever he has promised, he will see it to its very end give God a shout of praise this morning for he is worthy I believe it I believe it so many times we experience a loss and and we were praying for a dear sister Irina she had a loss in her family again and I say Lord well how come we experience losses Lord, how come people that we love, people we pray for, and can I tell you some things we just don't understand. But can I tell you that even if I don't understand that, I can still trust him. Lord, I don't understand why my kid might have some sort of issue, why, why there's, there's a, a disease or there's a sickness. I don't understand it. Why, Lord, me? Why my family, Lord? But can I tell you, I can still trust in the Lord because he will turn everything around for your good. Hallelujah. I don't get it, but you know it, God. I don't understand it, but you know it, Father. Hallelujah. And, and so see, the Israelites were, were, were afraid to trust in the Lord because they were always trying to do something in their own strength. They were always trying to come up to Moses and say, Moses, maybe we should return back. Maybe the promise isn't for us. Can I tell you the promise is for you? Can I tell you healing is for you? Can I tell you restoration is for your family? Can I tell you the promises of God are yes and amen in Jesus Christ and they are for you? 
you are the child of God you are the son and the daughter of God they are for you hallelujah hallelujah where did the land of milk and honey where did the houses come from where did the farms come from where did all of this goodness come from can I tell you sometimes God makes the sinner leave for you what you ought to pick up you see before the Israelites came there were Canaanites Hittites and some other ites and so they build everything up they build everything up so when the people of God would come in that they would have authority over these things can I tell you sometimes God will set you up in a good way when you are trusting in him it might be Bill Gates it might be somebody else they had planned something and God will lead you to that promise never underestimate what God can do in your life hallelujah whether it's blessing whether it's health whatever it might be say God you can make it happen if you said it I believe it hallelujah amen somebody and so I want to leave you with this point here and we're going to pray I feel like we need to pray for healing this morning church I feel like we need to pray for healing this morning do we believe that God is still the same yesterday today and forevermore do we still believe that God can heal today hallelujah and so as the worship group comes up I love this point Joshua chapter 1 verse 2 he says Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this Jordan Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this Jordan if you and I are going to get into our destiny there's some things that we have to leave behind there's certain things that we cannot go beyond until we leave something behind. There's certain things that we just have to put to rest. Moses was a great man. Moses was a wise man. Moses was a great man. But Moses was yesterday. Do not ever let the enemy keep you in yesterday because you won't be able to go into your tomorrow there's certain sins that have been holding us back from going forward can I speak about that this morning there's certain things that that we might have been involved that are that that that, that are wrong in the eyes of God they're just wrong and those things are keeping you in yesterday can I tell you you need to have a memorial service for those things you need to lay it down into the ground you need to say thank you but not thank you see ya I'm going to tomorrow come on somebody you need to say to your hurts and your pains and whatever has been going on oh yeah I got the memorial service I got the funeral for you but I gotta get into my destiny I gotta go into my promise so I leave that behind because I have a greater thing for me hallelujah can we stand up on our feet this morning hallelujah have a memorial service if the devil can keep you in yesterday he will prevent you from walking into your tomorrow can we lift up our hands this morning can we lift up our hands and say thank you Lord for your promises just pray just pray in your own words you need to celebrate the promises of God this morning Go ahead, whatever God has promised into your life, into your family, repeat those promises. If God has promised you something, say, thank you, Lord. Pray, church, let's pray, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your promises. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, you have promised me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You have promised me, hallelujah, your blessing. You have promised me promises of God, oh God, hallelujah, you have promised me oh Lord and I leave yesterday behind and I'm going forward I am leaving the sins and the things and the issues behind and I'm going forward in Jesus name in Jesus name